I remember when I was a little kid, leafing through one of the countless books I had on astronomy at my country home, and seeing a picture of a globular star cluster for the first time. I remember thinking, it's like a star made out of stars. We were very poor, but I had worked all summer and saved up and bought my first telescope, a real telescope, a large refractor with what I thought was a pretty decent mount, something that I could turn knobs and that would turn the refractor so I could keep it relatively pointed at a target. And then I went outside that very night and pointed that refractor at the sky in hopes of seeing a star cluster for myself. I wasn't good at navigating the sky in those days, but I managed to find one and it was beautiful. And my fascination with star clusters has persisted ever since. Now this is Coraline's Rose Star Cluster, about 6,500 light years away and containing 600 to 1,000 stars. And it gets its name because when you look at it through an eyepiece, it can look like the petals of a rose. But it is an open star cluster. And what we are going to focus on today is something entirely different, globular star clusters. Open star clusters are usually found within the arms of our galaxy. And they are the products of nebulae acting as stellar nurseries, producing whole groups of stars. They tend to be rather young, such as the Pleiades, 100 to 200 million years old, or the Coraline's Rose Star Cluster, which we just saw, estimated to be about 1.6 billion years old, also young compared to the scale of the universe. But globular clusters, insofar as we know, all those around our galaxy, the Milky Way, were formed when the galaxy itself was formed and are nearly 13 billion years old. And unlike open star clusters found in our galaxy, which contain hundreds to a few thousand stars that will eventually be pulled apart by the tidal forces of the galaxy, setting the stars about on their own path, their own voyage through the galaxy, globular clusters stay together. And most strangely of all, they form spheres not perfect spheres, but spheres like this one that we are now approaching. Some, it is believed, formed from the molecular cloud which initially formed our galaxy. And some, it is believed, are the remnants of smaller galaxies that drifted too close to the mighty Milky Way and were absorbed, all but a few stars that remain behind, like a ghost of a galaxy that once was. Those star clusters can be identified by their retrograde orbits. They move in directions contrary to the rotation of our galaxy, indicating they are likely the result of captured intergalactic structures. The Milky Way is surrounded by at least 150 globular clusters. Their cousins, open star clusters, as we noted earlier, stick to the galactic arms. But globular clusters, whether remnants of ancient galaxies, or residual formations from the Milky Way's own molecular cloud will forever orbit the Milky Way far off in the galactic halo, like the Milky Way's lost children. Orbits which can themselves take hundreds of millions of years. The time it takes a single globular cluster to orbit the Milky Way can be longer than the time it took complex life to evolve on Earth. Globular clusters, as you can see here, contain a very high density of stars. On average, they contain 0.4 stars per cubic parsec. But over the span of the extremely long lives of these structures, they go through a process of mass segregation. With so many stars so close to each other, and each orbiting in its own direction around a gravitational center, it is inevitable that these stars will have many gravitational interactions. When low mass stars pass close to high mass stars, the low mass stars will borrow some of the high mass stars' energy be accelerated and cast toward the outskirts of the star cluster, while the high mass stars will slow down, drifting toward the center. The inward migration of higher mass stars is called mass segregation. And in the end, in the heart of a globular star cluster, there can be 100 to 1,000 stars per cubic parsec. Eventually, the lower mass stars on the outskirts of the star cluster will interact with others. They will exchange energy, and the slightly more massive ones in their turn will also migrate toward the heart of the star cluster. Thus, little by little, over billions of years, a star cluster will experience core collapse, becoming denser and denser 
until it could almost truly be said that an old star cluster is in fact a star made out of stars. Globular star clusters tend to be old stars, their origins dating back to nearly the dawn of the universe. But their colors may vary, because smaller stars will burn cooler and redder and last much longer, while those stars within the globular cluster that became more massive during their formation will burn hotter, brighter, and faster. But every now and then, we'll find somewhere within a globular cluster a blue straggler. This is a bright, hot blue star that seems to be much younger than it should be. Their origin is something of a mystery. Perhaps they were young stars captured from the halo that surrounds our galaxy. But given the dense population of stars in the hearts of globular clusters, it is very likely that two or more stars interacted. One star donating to the other a great deal of material, or possibly even two stars merged. In either case, the result is an old star with the characteristics of a renewed or young star, hot, bright, and blue seeming out of place and out of time with its neighbors, a blue straggler. Sometimes globular clusters can have two or more distinctly aged populations of stars. It is believed this is likely to occur when a globular cluster orbits into a cloud of molecular gas spurring new star formation. We can see this happening around the antennae galaxies where two galaxies are merging, and in the chaos of churning galactic tides, gas clouds are strewn about and orbiting globular clusters are running into them, forming new stars or even merging with one another. The heart of a globular cluster is a cosmos of light, and any planets or planetesimals that might momentarily have the privilege of existing there would not know what it is to have a dark side. But with so many interactions between such closely packed stars, it would be difficult for planets to exist in the heart of a globular cluster where they would be cast about like flotsam upon the gravity waves of a rippling cosmic ocean. Any planets that were there would likely last only perhaps a couple hundred million years before being tossed away to become rogue planets, themselves forever isolated and adrift without apparent star in the galactic halo. But if we were to visit a star on the outskirts of one of these densely packed globular clusters, we might find a moon around a ringed world. And from the vantage of that place, the view would be spectacular. Even then, finding a rocky world or moon would be unlikely. Globular star clusters around the Milky Way are very old, formed of the primordial stuff of the universe, the element hydrogen. Primarily, the stars and globular clusters are population two stars. But as they age, they will shed their materials the larger, more massive ones going supernova. And thus, heavier elements will be ejected by these stars into the star clusters. So the stuff to make planets will inevitably be in any star cluster. But even then, do the conditions exist to form planets? It is unclear, but our universe is vast. And probability means that no matter how low the statistical chance of an event occurring, somewhere it likely will. The star cluster before you now is NGC 7078. It can be seen from Earth even with the naked eye in the constellation Pegasus. And while I cannot be sure, it may be that first star cluster that I saw through my telescope so long ago when I was just a child. And if you were to observe this structure with the naked eye, it would just look like a star. And unless you had learned something about the nature of our cosmos, you would never know that you were looking at a star made out of stars. NGC 7078 orbits far out in the galactic halo, 35,000 light years from Earth, and is home to some 100,000 stars. And it is a very dense star cluster, having gone through much of the process of core collapse. Perhaps driven by nostalgia, I imaged the star cluster again only a few nights ago with an 81 millimeter telescope that's about 3.18 inches, not quite enough to resolve the individual stars. As we move deeper into winter and humidity vacates the atmosphere, I'll soon turn a much more powerful telescope with an 8-inch mirror toward that star cluster and image it again. But the Hubble provides us the best images we'll probably ever see. This globular cluster, readily visible from our world, 
perhaps exhibits one of the best examples of a globular cluster serving as a mini galaxy as well, because it is believed that at its core is a rare type of black hole, an intermediate black hole roughly 4,000 times the mass of our Sun. This massive black hole at the heart of the globular cluster makes the cluster a bit like a galaxy, for galaxies have at their heart black holes as well, supermassive black holes of millions or even billions of masses. Globular clusters like this one serve another useful function for astronomers. Because they have predictable brightness, they can serve as standard candles with predictable illumination, allowing astronomers to measure the distance of entire galaxies. Dare to imagine what it would be like if an entire structure like this star made out of stars was our home. And when we looked overhead from our home planet, the entire expanse of the Milky Way galaxy was our sky. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story, where we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. The channel has grown so much since it was created, and I would just like to take a moment to thank everybody for your interest and enthusiasm. Keep watching to learn more about the natural world and the amazing cosmos that surrounds us. And take advantage of our link below if you are interested in the arts and science of astrophotography. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe. And don't forget to hit that like button.